with the blessing that was suitable to each one. Did not press all the way to the coastal lands. They did not drive out the inhabitants of the coastal lands. You have this in Judges in chapter 1. What they did was they stopped short off the coast and they lived inland. Now that is why I say of this prophecy that these folks were blessed, but boy did they need to be challenged. You see... If you were a descendant in the line of Zebulun, if you were in that tribe and you came and you read Genesis 49, your eyes would be wide open. You'd say, we were meant to be living by the sea. We were meant to have an international ministry to folks on ships that were coming and why in the world are we all living in land? And the answer to that question is because previous generations in our family were too half-hearted. It was too tough for them to drive out the enemies when God said that they were to do that. And because they were so half-hearted, that's why we're where we are today. And if you were born into the line of Zebulun and you saw that from Genesis in chapter 49, how would you pray as a result? You would surely pray like this. You would say, oh God, I see that we are here where we are today because of the half-heartedness that has gone ahead of us. Lord, make us a generation that is wholehearted in pursuing every opportunity that you will open up for us in our time. Don't let us be like a generation that that settles short of pressing in to all that you would hold before us. Don't let us be like that. Because what we see from the scripture is that you have more for us, more opportunity than that which we have yet apprehended. So they're blessed, but boy, they need to be challenged. And the same is true for Issachar. Look at that in verse 14 and 15. Issachar is a strong donkey. Now look at what the strong donkey is doing. Crouching between the sheepfolds. What's a man of strength doing, sort of crouching and hiding between sheepfolds? He's not standing up. He's not deploying his strength. He's hiding himself, you see. And why? Well, here's what that's all about. Verse 15, he saw that a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant. And you see the point of this. Issachar, you are strong. Your strength could be deployed to bring blessing to others. Your strength could be used in the advance of God's great purpose in the world. But here's the problem. You like your own comfort way too much. Zebulun, Issachar, you are blessed, but oh, you need to be challenged. Because in both of these tribes, what actually happened was so much less than what might have been if they had pressed into all the purpose of God. And some of us here today, that's exactly what we need to hear. We've set ourselves on the dream of uh, finding a pleasant place and being comfortable and... And somehow lost in the middle of all of that, any driving sense of the great purpose and mission to which God has called us all. So some blessed and needing to be warned. Some blessed in Christ, really needing to be challenged. Deploy your strength. Press into all that God has for you. Third, some are blessed and need to be encouraged and perhaps this is for you especially today i'm grouping here dan and gad and asher and naphtali and what they have in common is that these short prophecies to these four sons all relate to a particular area of gifting that was given by god and again it would have been very helpful for people in future generations in these tribes to look back and to see what god had given by nature that might then be deployed for the great purpose of his grace. In regards to Dan, which I've described this as gifts of wisdom, Dan shall be a serpent, verse 17, in the way, and a viper by the path. This is one of the places where in the Bible the image of the serpent is used in a good way, 
Remember, Jesus said you are to be as wise as serpents. The cunning, the wisdom, the shrewdness, the thinking of the serpent being commended by the Lord Jesus. And I think that's the point of the image here. And its significance is that Dan was one of the smaller tribes, little Dan. And here's what is being said. Can I put it this way? Dan, you are one of the smaller tribes, but do not let anyone look down on you. Remember that a little snake can bite the heel of a huge horse with such venom and with such power that someone proudly sitting on the horse as its rider may be tumbled backwards and brought to the ground. Dan, let no one look down on you because of your smallness. You can accomplish by the grace of God much more than you think. Then to Gad, gifts of strength, raiders shall raid Gad, but he shall raid at their heels. That's verse 19. And the significance here is that when God's people came into the promised land, Gad was one of the tribes that settled on the east side of the Jordan, which meant that if enemies or raiders came from the east, as they often did, Gad and the others on the east side of the Jordan were the kind of first line of defense, protecting the other more westward tribes uh, from these raiders. They took the brunt of the fight every time. And they had the strength and the resilience to do it. And it was a remarkable gift from God that wonderfully served the rest of their brothers and their sisters. Gad, here's your ministry. You're going to be a protector of others. And some of you will immediately say, yeah, yeah, that's what God's called me to do. That's who I am. And God has positioned them, the tribe of Gad, for this particular ministry. The raiders come and you know what? Gad chases the raiders off. That's what's said in this verse. Asher, gifts of service, verse 20. Asher's food shall be rich. And he shall yield royal delicacies. If you were to choose where to live in terms of the tribes, go for Asher. They lived in the most fertile part of the land of Canaan, north of Mount Carmel. And they lived by the sea. So they had the harvest of the land and they had the harvest of the sea. They had an absolute abundance Boy, you could stock your kitchen really well if you lived in the tribe of Asher where they settled after the conquest of Canaan. And to them, notice that they do not only enjoy these good gifts, they share them with others. Asher yields royal delicacies, yields gives up from what has been given. That's what's being said here. Gives that which is fit for a king. That's what's being said. And so here's the special word for Asher, and it will be a word for some here today, abundantly blessed. Asher, I have given you an abundance. And your special calling is that out of that abundance... You should give back generously to others for the glory of God. You should be offering that which is fit for a king. And then Naphtali. And I've used the phrase here, gifts of compassion. These are all different gifts that God is giving to different people. Naphtali is a doe, verse 21, or a deer let loose that bears beautiful fawns. Hard verse to translate, it might be, there's a footnote in the ESV, says it might be speaks beautiful words rather than bears beautiful fonts. I, I don't know, it's, it's very complex and would be well beyond me. The scholars can't agree on this. But either way, whether it's bearing beautiful fonts or speaking beautiful words, the deer conveys an image of grace, tenderness, gentleness. That's why I'm using the word compassion. Naphtali, I have given you a special gift of compassion. There's people here who have this. You have the ability, because of your own tenderness, to come alongside a person who is hurting and wounded, and, and they will open up to you, and you have the kind of sympathy that enables you to speak into their lives. You may underestimate the importance and the value of this gift, but it is a gift from above. Use it for the good of your brothers and sisters. 
So Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, you're all blessed. And God has gifted you that you may contribute to the advance of his great purpose and his great work. Are you been looking at how you are blessed and need to be challenged? How you're blessed and need to be encouraged. We'll look at a third point in just a moment, so I hope you'll stay with us. This is Open the Bible with Pastor Colin Smith and a message called Troubled and Dependent, part of our series on the study of the story of Joseph called Snapshots of a Godly Life. And if you ever miss a broadcast in the series or you want to go back and listen again, you can do that at our website. Just come to OpenTheBible.org or you can stream the program or download an MP3 for free. Again, that's at OpenTheBible.org. Let's get back to the message. Again, here is Pastor Colin. Now here's the last thing. You are blessed and you will be honored. And there are three brothers who are singled out for special honor. Two of them uh, will be no surprise uh, to us. Benjamin and Joseph, who come last in the list, uh, were very special to Jacob because they were born through Rachel, who was the great love of his life. And we've seen that again and again in the story. The last to be mentioned is Benjamin, verse 47. He's a ravenous wolf in the morning and devouring the prey and at evening dividing the spoil. What a gift Benjamin was to the family. He was the youngest, the last to be born, but oh, how thankful they must all have been for Benjamin. If you trace the contribution of the tribe of Benjamin through the Old Testament, you will find that again and again, when the people of Israel had their backs against the wall and trouble was coming, in the thick of the fight and in the heat of the battle, who stepped up? The tribe of Benjamin. The last shall be first. They were, they, they were out there in God's amazing grace with tremendous courage. And they're commended for this in this prophetic word. It's also interesting that um, the tribe of Benjamin produced some amazing leaders uh, in the subsequent generations. Queen Esther, related to Mordecai, we're specifically told that he was from the tribe of Benjamin. And then there was someone in the New Testament came from the tribe of Benjamin. Who was that? The Apostle Paul of the tribe of Benjamin. And then Joseph is wonderfully commended here for his fruitfulness. Verse 22, Joseph is a fruitful bough. The blessings of your father are mighty. Verse 26, may they be on the head of Joseph and on the bough of him who was set apart from his brothers. And Joseph is pictured here as being crowned on the brow blessing, glory, honor that is coming to him in the presence of the Almighty. All that he suffered and yet God is no one's debtor. And I was just thinking about this, you know, if Joseph could be here today and if we could put him out in the foyer there and if we all had a chance to ask him our questions, I think there'd be a long line of us. We'd wait a long time to speak to him and we'd ask him, I think, questions like this, you know, can you give me some help with how to forgive my brothers? Can you tell me how you got over, you know, the healing of these wounds and the terrible things that were done to you? Because I, I, I do struggle with that. And some of them might say, you know, I, how did you cope with your old dad when he was so grumpy, you know, miserable and my years are few and evil and... You know, I've got, a, I've got a relative who isn't very easy and very happy. We, we'd ask all these questions. And you know what? I think Joseph would say, you know, it all seems rather a long time ago to me now. Because uh, since then, I've, I've been 4,000 years nearly in the presence of the Lord. And the sheer joy and the glory of his presence, it just seems to have made all of that somehow slip away. The passing troubles of this life that we experience, Paul says, are working for us an eternal weight of glory, an eternal weight of glory that will far surpass them all. And then the very last, you knew that I would keep this for the last if you're following here, is of course Judah, and you know why it's last. What was special about Judah? Only one thing, that it was into this line that Jesus Christ was born. 
And that's the reference in verse 10, that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. That's why in verse 9 there's reference to the lion, the lion's cub, pointing forward to the book of Revelation where Jesus Christ is unveiled as the lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who holds the scepter in his hand, and he is the one to whom the obedience of all the people, people from all nations will come and offer to him obedience and worship. So to gather this together in this last minute, for what purpose does God have you in this service here today? Some of us are blessed, we're in Christ, but you need to be warned. Sin is crouching at the door. And God's purpose for you today was that you would be reminded of what is in your flesh so that you will be ready to be on your guard this week. So that Satan does not gain the advantage over you. Some of us, we are blessed, we're in Christ. Oh yeah, but boy, do we need to be challenged. We've settled down for what's comfortable for us. We have not pressed into all the opportunities that God holds before us. We have not yet deployed our strength in a way that would enable us to look back on life and and to say that we had offered our best to Christ. Years are passing. When are you going to do this? You're in Christ. You're blessed. But you really need to be challenged. And then some of us are blessed. We're in Christ. We need to be encouraged. You, You tend to undervalue your gifts. You tend to feel that you're... Ministry can't possibly matter. Enough of that. Be done with that. And deploy what God has given to you for the blessing of others and for his praise and for his glory. And some, you're here because you are not yet blessed. And the reason that you're not yet blessed is that you're not yet in Jesus Christ, the blessed one. You've not submitted yourself to this one who holds the scepter in his hand. Who lays claim to the obedience of your life. And the word of God to you today is. That God has exalted this lion of the tribe of Judah. To the highest place. And given him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Including your knee. The word of God to you today is therefore an invitation. A call even a command. That you should come to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ who was crucified and is risen. That you should kneel before the one who holds the scepter in faith and in repentance. That you should pledge unconditional obedience to him for the rest of your life. Knowing that in him you will be blessed. The blessing of God in Christ will be yours. And it is so good to know that when we come to Jesus, he will not turn us away. You're listening to Open the Bible with Pastor Colin Smith. And maybe as you've been listening today, you realize that you don't know Jesus, but you'd like to come to him. But you'd like to talk with uh, one of our staff members about what that would mean for you. I hope you'll contact us. You can always call us toll free at 877-OPEN-365. That's 1-877-673-6365. Or reach us through the website, Open the Bible. Well, Open the Bible is listener-supported, but as you give a gift of any amount this month, we want to send you a book called You Can Trust God With Your Story, Embracing the Mysteries of Providence. And Colin, it's written by your longtime friends, Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth and Robert Wolgamuth. Yes, indeed. Uh, Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth has long been a friend of Karen and myself as her her husband, uh, Robert. And I'm absolutely delighted to be able to offer this book that they've collaborated on together. Nancy is a wonderful and insightful Bible teacher. And Robert is a wonderful writer as well. And in this collaboration, they brought together a collection of stories from the Bible and also a collection of stories 
from Christian experience. And what these two together do is they draw out how God works in the lives of his children, especially in things we don't understand. It's a wonderfully helpful book for anyone who's saying, what is God doing in my life? What is God doing in the world? It deals with God's providence and it reminds us that God is the one who writes the story of his children's lives. Well, we would love to send you a copy of this book, You Can Trust God with Your Story, by Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth and Robert Wolgamuth, is our way of saying thank you for your financial support this month. Find out more or give online at openthebible.org or call us at 877-OPEN-365. That's 1-877-673-6365 or openthebible.org. For Pastor Colin Smith, I'm Steve Hiller. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll join us next time. This program is a listener-supported production of Open the Bible. You're a Christian, but when something bad happens to you, you wonder, is God punishing me? Find out why next time on Open the Bible. This is 91.5 FM KSIV St. Louis, a service of BOT Radio Network. We all seem so focused on our own wants and needs that we don't often pay enough attention to the needs of our spouse. On the next Focus on the Family, Matt and Lisa Jacobson describe how to thrive in your marriage together by learning to love and serve one another well. That's next time on Focus on the Family with Jim Daly. Hear Focus on the Family, weekday mornings at 7 Central Time on BOT Radio Network. The following is not an actor, but a real-life story from Trinity Debt Management. I was finishing undergrad and got credit cards because I couldn't work full-time. So that started the credit card journey for me. If you're in debt and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-280-1558. And then when I got married, we combined our credit card debt, and it became impossible to pay off on our own. At that point, I was like, I don't know where to turn. And then I found... Trinity. Trinity will consolidate your accounts into one easy-to-manage monthly payment, reduce your interest, and possibly improve your credit score. You'll save thousands. I initially was scared to call, and immediately I felt relief. I mean, in a matter of three years, we've already paid down $20,000 in credit card debt, which is huge. Call Trinity at 1-800-280-1558. That's 1-800-280-1558. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month, and that's huge, but it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan, double MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want a plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 863-BIBLE. That's 863-BIBLE. 863-BIBLE. My name is Martin Winslow, founder and president of Bethlehem Christian Academy. BCA is a ministry dedicated to feeding and educating children in some of the poorest places in Africa and South Asia. Our ministry not only provides physical bread for children, but also spiritual bread through the Word of God. When you support a child through BCA, you help to transform a life. For just $36 a month, you can offer a child the hope of a better future, but more importantly, give them the opportunity to learn about Jesus Christ. To get involved with BCA's ministry, please visit bcaministries.com. Ferrato's Pasta and Pizzeria provides off-site catering for Father's Day and graduation parties with full-service buffet or a la carte menu items. Ferrato's Pasta and Pizzeria on Manchester Road in Rock Hill. Catering menus online at ferrato's.com. Hi, this is Stephen Burton here with your Waterproof Solutions Foundation tip. The three reasons Waterproof Solutions is called poor gutter operations, poor landscaping, poor hardscaping. 
Knowing the reason, knowing the why, it's where you start. Waterproof Solutions, STL.com. The greater your public identification with Jesus Christ, the more reward you are credited. Dr. Tony Evans says for Christians, judgment isn't about salvation, but compensation. The issue of rewards boils down to one thing. To what degree did you value the free gift of salvation? The return to God. All this week on The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans. Weekday evenings at 11 on AM 760, 96.9 FM, and 101.5 FM. When we're trying to confirm God's will in our lives, Pastor Greg Laurie says there are signs to look for. Today on A New Beginning, he gives us good insight. I have found that when I'm in the will of God, circumstantially things will come together. This is what we often refer to as doors opening, right? Or doors closing. I'm telling you, the Lord will lead you more than you realize if you'll just tune in to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. This is the day when the lost are found. This is the day for a new beginning. Oh, follow an unwritten rule. If they flip a certain switch and the plane suddenly starts going crazy, they switch it back. Pretty basic. Well, spiritually, if we think a certain path we've chosen is God's will for our lives, but then our lives suddenly fall apart, maybe it's worth reconsidering. Today on A New Beginning, Pastor Greg Laurie brings helpful insights on following God's will for our lives. It's practical help for those of us who are unsure about God's direction. Let's grab our Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12, and the title of my message is, How to Know the Will of God. God's given us a manual on how to know His will, and it's right here, and it's called the Bible. So grab your Bible, turn to Romans chapter 12, and here are the words of the Apostle Paul on how to know the will of God in your life. Romans 12, I'm reading verses 1 to 2. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's will is good. Now, our definition of good might be different than God's definition of good. Our definition of good is probably something along the lines of it's fun, it's uh, pleasurable, it's pain-free, and it's in the moment. God's definition of good may be that which is productive or character-forming and more eternally focused. Now that doesn't mean that there are times God is not working in my life and it's not fun, but what I'm saying is there are things I go through that are not enjoyable for the moment, but they're producing something that is far greater, and that's why it's good. And one day I'll see that when I get to heaven. I'll understand a lot of things that I went through. But until that day, I have to trust the Lord. I look at the small picture. God looks at the big picture. I look at the here and now. God looks at the by and by. So you have to understand that his will for you is good, even though it might be difficult at times. So how do I discover the will of God? First and foremost, God speaks to you through the Bible. And that's why you need to read the Bible. And that's why you need to read the Bible every day. And that's why you need to memorize the Bible. Because God will never contradict what is written in Scripture. Right? And I bring this up because I've had people say crazy things to me that they tell me the Lord told them. God told me this. I've had couples come up, you know, uh, we're living together, we're having sex, but the Lord said, he's cool with it. <laughs> Did he actually say he's cool with it? Direct quote. I don't know who you're listening to, but God didn't say that. Now, how do you know that, Greg? Because the Bible says this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you abstain from immorality. So I know the word of God on that. So don't tell me the Lord told you to do something the Bible says you should not do. 
So as you know the word of God, you'll be able to discern those voices that you hear or people that speak to you saying they're speaking for God. You evaluate everything according to scripture. Everything you need to know about God is found on the pages of the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.15 says, 16 rather, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's useful to teach us what is true. It makes us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and teaches us to do what is right. And that's important because sometimes our emotions get the best of us. Right? Have you ever had a time where you're just gripped with fear, anxiety? You're panicking? And then you correct it with the word of God. Oh right, here's what the Bible says. Go back to what scripture says. I don't need pious platitudes. I don't need cute little posts from Pinterest or, you know, sunsets with nice sayings on Instagram. I need the word of God. That's what's going to sustain me in times of difficulty. And that's what's going to sustain you. <laughs> Nothing else. So it's there in the word. Jesus said, behold, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me to do your will, O God. Number two, God will speak to you through circumstances. I don't know that I've ever based any big decision of my life on circumstances alone. However, I have found that when I'm in the will of God, circumstantially things will come together. This is what we often refer to as doors opening, right? Or doors closing. So the Lord will open doors. Let me give you an example. The Lord came to Philip, who was having some great meetings, and people were coming to Christ, and people were being healed. And an angel of the Lord said to him, go to the desert. Nothing else. Just go to the desert. He's like, are you sure? Go to the desert. Okay, so scene two. He's standing in the desert. Leans on a cactus. Ow, you know, wait, what am I supposed to do here? And what, preach to the lizards? I mean, why, why am I here? And all of a sudden, in the distance, he sees a dust cloud and looks like some people are approaching and they get a little closer and he can make it out, looks like a chariot. Oh, it's a few chariots. Oh, there's security around uh, this one chariot. This is someone important. Now the person pulls into view and he can see this is a foreign dignitary from Ethiopia who had gone to Jerusalem searching for God. And he's reading out loud from the scroll of Isaiah, chapter 53. And Philip's standing there and he's thinking, okay, Lord, I got it from here. I think I know what's going on. He says to this man from Ethiopia, excuse me, I'm Philip just hanging out in the desert, as it turns out. Uh, do you understand what you're reading? The member of Ethiopia says, how can I unless someone shows me the way? So Philip climbs into the chariot, explains Isaiah 53, which happens to be talking about the death of Jesus on the cross. That man believes in Jesus and he's baptized. So this is how the Lord will often lead you. One step at a time. I don't get like divine direction in the morning. Like go to the gas station at 4.03 and you're going to talk to some guy. Usually it's I'm driving along and my idiot light goes on. I'm running on fumes. So I go to the gas station. I pull in. I'm pumping gas. Here's a guy right over on the other side. He's pumping gas. Hey, how's it going? Good. Great. All right. Dun, 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 dun. All of a sudden, something comes up. Maybe I say something. He says something. We start a conversation. Now I'm sharing the gospel with him. Now it's gone to the next level. I realize that was a divine appointment. I'm telling you, the Lord will lead you more than you realize if you'll just tune in to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So circumstantially, but then there's that work in your heart. This is what I mean by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Sort of a spiritual stirring. I have found that when I'm in God's will, I will have this peace. Does that make sense? Kind of this peace. In fact, we're even told over in Philippians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Or literally, a better translation, let the peace of God as an umpire settle with finalities all matters that arise in your hearts. I found when I'm in the will of God, I'll have the peace of God. Finally, there's God's timing. Just as important as the will of God is the timing of God. Sometimes we have the right idea. We're just a little ahead of schedule. Think of old Moses. Moses had the right idea. Get the Israelites out of Egypt. He was just about 40 years too soon. He took matters into his own hands. 
That didn't go well at all. He went into exile into the desert for 40 years. And then the Lord commissioned him to go and deliver the people of Israel. So it comes down to this. If the request is wrong, God says no. If the timing is wrong, God says slow. If you are wrong, God says grow. But if the request is right and the timing is right and you are right, God says go. Pastor Greg Lord. Our moments. Back it comes. Boom. For real. There is an approach to personal evangelism that's just like that. There are Bible schools in America that cultivate it. If you don't fill your quota before Friday, maybe they've forgotten what God alone can do and what we can do. So don't think in those terms. The key thing is sincerity of heart. You see somebody thirsty, give them a drink of water. You see them unhappy, give them a word of encouragement. You see them in need, help them. You see they fell off their donkey, give them a ride on your donkey. I don't have a donkey. Well, neither, neither do I. So, all right. We must be clear as to what God requires of us by way of cooperation in this work. Not only preparation, but cooperation. Here we go. Although the work of conversion is essentially God, the Holy Spirit's work, he calls us to work with him in achieving it. Are you going to tell me that obstetricians produce babies? They may walk around like they do, but they don't. Half the time it's the little nurse that does more than the obstetrician. Sorry, guys, sorry. All right. But the obstetrician has to go to bed at night and recognize God produced the baby. I may have had the thrill of saying, Mrs. Jones, it's a girl. But that's all I did. Right? And that's our part in salvation ultimately. That when we've lived our lives and sung our song and played the melody of the transformed life by the power of the Spirit, and somebody comes to faith in Jesus Christ, we didn't do it. God did it, and he gave us the joyful privilege of being around in the labor ward to see it happen. That's fantastic. We may plant, we may water, but only God makes it grow. So the work of conversion is his, but we get a part in it with him. Our responsibility then, and we read this and we're not going to camp on it, is to make known the Word of God. How can we make known the Word of God if we don't know the Word of God? Therefore, we need to know the Word of God. That takes us back. And what are we going to urge upon men? I mean, are we just going to stand around and say, oh, well, oh, well, you know, I, I learned that God does everything and I'm not really very important. I'm just in the labor ward. No, this is what we're going to do. You take the references when you go home. We should urge men to seek God. Okay? Urge them to do so. Say to our friends, hey, have you read John's Gospel? We should urge men to repent. We can make them repent. Only God can grant repentance. We've understood that. Nevertheless, we should tell them, you know what? You need to turn around, buddy. You're going in the wrong direction. I once went the same direction. I want to urge you to turn around. We should urge them to be converted. Years ago, I remember when they changed from uh, coal gas to natural gas in Britain, and they had all these plugs for being converted to natural gas, and all kinds of advertisements on TV that said, have you been converted? And people used to come around our houses and urge us to be converted. And it was one of the greatest evangelistic opportunities for the church in a long, long time. So the guy, the guy came to the door and said, have you been converted? He said, well, uh, which one are you talking about? And he said, natural gas. And we said, well, I'll talk to you about that if you talk to me about another kind. He said, what's that? And I said, have you ever been converted to faith in Jesus Christ? It was, good. It was a good time. Good time. <laughs> okay? And to believe on the Lord Jesus. Okay? Just in case we think that in terms of what we have a privilege of doing is kind of nothing leaning against the wall, let's just drive this home. In doing this, we must be willing to display genuine friendship, which will often be costly. Okay? Again, you know, if we, if we 
are not genuinely friendly to people and we give them the kind of scalp notion, then it's no surprise if they tune us out. And our friendship needs to embrace those who don't embrace our values. If you love those who love you, what reward is that, said Jesus? We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. I hope we all have non-Christian friends, and a good number of them. I hope we all are in some context during the week, in an environment where in the context of friendship, we have the opportunity to give an answer for the reason for the hope that is within us. And we need to cultivate those friendships, recognizing that they will often cost us. And we are to be ready to do this work anytime and anywhere. Let me finish up with this final statement. The implications of these truths are far-reaching. And they ought to at least instill in us a renewed sense of dependence upon God and an increased this is confidence this is in God. So, dependence upon God, confidence privacy. in God, invasion which will be demonstrated privacy. largely in our prayers. That's, that's the great burning longing of Paul's heart in Romans 10. I, I would that all Israel would be saved. He says, the whole driving compassion of my life is the salvation of those who, like me, have come from the root of, of David. And so because of that, depending upon God, confident that God can do what he alone can do, he cries out to him in believing prayer. So I hope that is helpful to us that there is a part which God alone can do, therefore we ought not to try to do it. But the fact that God has a part which is not ours does not negate the part which is ours. And therefore we need to do what we must and not try and do what we needn't. You're listening to Truth For Life with Alistair Begg. It is God's perfect plan to enlist us for the task of evangelism. Alistair will clarify our role over the next few weeks as we continue in this study. We want to encourage you to take advantage of several resources that will be helpful for you as you look for opportunities to tell other people about Jesus. First, we want to recommend a book called Before You Share Your Faith, Five Ways to Be Evangelism Ready. This is a quick book to read filled with five key tips and suggestions to consider before you try to introduce someone to the gospel. The book helpfully addresses how to overcome reluctance, how to push past fears you may have about initiating gospel conversations. You can request your copy of Before You Share Your Faith when you donate today at truthforlife.org slash donate. Another significant and meaningful way that you can play a part in evangelism is through the global outreach of Truth For Life. It's the faithful prayers and monthly giving that comes from our truth partners that enables Truth For Life to be broadcast on your local station and to be heard online by people who are listening in countries all around the world. Because truth partners are so essential at Truth For Life, we are praying that God will add 500 new truth partners here during the month of June. So if you're listening right now and you're thinking, you know, maybe it's time for me to get on board, I hope you'll reach out and become a Truth For Life Truth Partner today. Call us at 888-588-7884 or go online to truthforlife.org slash truthpartner. I'm Bob Lapine. Tomorrow we'll learn how to confidently respond to critics as we share our faith. The Bible teaching of Alistair Begg is furnished by Truth For Life. Where the learning is for living. Helping to build your life on the solid rock of God's Word. This is Bot Radio Network. Broadcasting America's best Bible Person teachers at 91.5 FM, like, KSIV, St. Louis, also at AM 1320 and 95.9 FM.
I how can doing, I be sure I'm saying saved? What it want is me being part say. of a church necessary to walk with what Jesus? What will heaven be like? Hi, this is Bill Meyer with Core Christianity. Do you have questions about the Bible or the Christian life? If so, we want to hear from you. Pastor Adriel Stop Sanchez will answer your boys. questions live Stop Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 833-THE-CORE. Hear Core Christianity, weekday afternoons at 1.30 Central Time on Bot Radio Network. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it. This is real shit. That sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month. And that's might huge, but it's also syndrome, true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch to the customer me, satisfaction rate. Huge, but it's also syndrome, true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch to the customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter crazy. century and members have shared I'm more than three billion dollars of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with, you can call right now Might and get a price within two cheap. minutes. A very, very Might smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 863-BIBLE. That's 863-BIBLE. 863-BIBLE. Here's a story of both tragedy and hope. This is Bible International. Lolita was born in coastal India, raised a strict Hindu, and at age 14 forced to marry a man she did not know, she did not love. When that man died a couple of years ago, because of her abject poverty, the drug cartel recruited her into human trafficking. She would live in utter hopelessness for many years and until a former victim who was brought to a place of safety became a believer, Let's brought Lolita to a place of safety, introduced her to Jesus, and taught her to share her faith. Lolita would go on to lead about 90 former Hindus to Jesus before she died of HIV AIDS, something she was afflicted with during those years in human trafficking. God made something beautiful of her life, and we can step into the story of these new believers today at only $5 a Bible. $100 sins 20, $500 sins 100. Bot radio listeners were 20% of the way to our our goal to bless uh, 8,000 uh, Bible as believers in Asia. See, you Will you call 800 Yes Thomas. Word? 800 Yes Word. 800 Yes Word or give it botradionetwork.com. Hey, St. Louis, this is Abby Johnson, author of Unplanned and founder of In the Number None and Pro Love Ministries. My, my team and I are so excited to bring the 8th Annual Pro Life Women's Conference to you in St. Charles from June 23rd through the 25th. The only pro life conference created for women by women. Come learn with us. Worship with us and celebrate. Your ticket includes all meals during the conference. Register at ProLifeWomen.com. That's ProLifeWomen.com. A Missouri teenage cashier got an extraordinary tip from a customer. This is Truth Itself on Bot Radio Network. 16-year-old Raheem Lumpkins has been working the register at Independence Pizza Ranch for about a month. When no one is in line to pay, he's busy sweeping floors and wiping down the buffet and gets excited when he sees new customers. Customer Robert Samay was so impressed by the teen's attitude, he gave him a $2,500 tip. It wasn't until he picked up the cash that it became clear Lumpkin's hands and arms were different from most. They never fully developed. Lumpkin said, I don't describe it as a condition. God made me this way for a reason. You can see these stories and more on our website, truthitself.com and Bot Radio Network. Truth Itself is brought to you by the Helios Projects, training untrained pastors worldwide using 50 years of Dr. Kroll's Bible teaching and theology training is thriving. Your $150 gift trains three at trainapastor.com. Hi, I'm Rob West. Did you know that MoneyWise has changed its name to Faith and Finance? We believe it's our primary goal as Christians to be used by God as faithful, selfless stewards to advance His kingdom, which is more than simply being wise with our money. Listen each day as I take your calls at 800-525-7000 on any financial topic. It's Faith and Finance. Tired of this shit. Shit ain't supposed to be happening.
Real shit. Ain't no way in hell somebody's supposed to be tapping into your life. Just tapping into your life. No. Ain't no way. I want my life back. Tired of doing uh, um, something talking to me in the background of my life. A person or somebody hacking into my life. Human hacking or whatever it might be called. I need information. That's what I need. It's some real shit. I remember the uh, years they had that mall were out and all that shit. It was a whole bunch of shit that was unexplainable how they was doing it. This shit done subliminally, using subliminal messaging, subliminal music, uh, opposite talking and words, or either straight. It's using, uh, it's talking, uh, directly to me, like in a conversation, having conversations or wanting to have conversations with me. I try my best to avoid that shit. Um, uh, it's, uh, touching me with some kind of probe or some kind of light. Because you feel it waving over my body or touching my body. I think it's coming from the lights, uh, dealing with this in this area, those uh, transportation towers, the waves coming through them, Wi-Fi, 5G, all that type of shit, and people using that shit like they would uh, 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 wave radio, like wave radio. Somebody has pinpointed me. There's been pinpointing other people around here and and Hello Moto Shots fired. Shot. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got you. Two fifteen, or that, and a stone. Too grim for me. See, balling ain't easy. We both. Days doing the stop standing station static soothes. 
sap, so song, sing, sung, sang, soar, scatting, skills, scratches, bills, boundaries, or buildings on anything. On anything, don't worry about me. Who, what, and why, when. You you looking for me? You looking for me? Tell them your story. Your story's, story's chill. T- to tell your story till, the, till it ends. How do you want it to begin? Let me know. Let me The store's closed until tomorrow. Where is she? I don't know. I don't know. Or where you stay, stand for what's the purpose. That's the 10, mama, mama, if I... If I make an in home, you know. Yeah, uh, that be uh be the last point price. Now I do this one last. I got to have you next to me. It's called She is a Woman. See your smile each day. No other girl has captured me. How you changed my way.